So in this clip we're going to talk about how to use information criteria to select the best linear univariate armor model. We'll start out with stating a generic armor PQ model. You can see that here yt a function of p lags of itself and q lags of the epsilon, the error term. And the question is now which value should we use for p and q? Okay, so which is best? So in general, it is true that if you increase the number of flags, you get a better fit of your model. Now, what does fit mean in this context? Let us just define that. The fit is measured as the estimated variance of the regression residuals. ISS is the residuals residual sum of squares, t asterisk is the number of observations. So that's just your common measure of uh, residual fit. So the question then is that if we increase p and in fact also q, we get the same result if the fit gets better, does that mean we should choose p and q as large as possible? And the answer is no, because it turns out if you choose p and q too large, that means that you get a deteriorating forecasting performance. We need a, there's a trade-off between number of parameters and the fit which we need to impose. So we want to impose this trade-off and this is what information criteria are used for. So, and here I shall state them formally. SIC and AIC, they exist slightly different versions. Uh, for instance, EVs use slightly different versions, but it all comes out the same. So the SIC, we start with that. That's the fit term, log of sigma hat squared, then the number of parameters times log t asterisk divided by t asterisk. The AIC is exactly the same, just that this la last factor it's just going to be 2 over t asterisk. So what we want is we want the smallest possible value of the information criterion and the question is which PQ combination delivers that. Now this last term they differ, the two criteria differ by that last term. They're like penalty factors for extra number of coefficients. You see that's the factor to the number of coefficients and it turns out that the, the penalty term for extra coefficients in the SIC is larger, at least for moderately large t asterisk, is larger than that for the AIC. That means that we remember we want smaller values of the information criterion. That means that in general we get smaller choices for P and Q from the SIC than from the AIC. So here's an example using the US inflation, uh, sorry, unemployment rate. We can get them from uh, Fred St. Louis. The identifier for that rate was UN rate. If you just search for that on the Fred database, you get straight to, the, to that series, UN rate, that's the identifier. Uh, you can see the series here, there's lots, long swings, uh, Unemployment rate goes up in recessions, which are the gray shaded areas. We want to download the data. For our example, we're going to start the data in January 1980. These are monthly data and finish in October 2013, and then we download. I uploaded these data to eViews, and here are the data from 80 to 2013. Of course, you can see the last, the most recent recession, if its impact on the unemployment. Uh, unemployment rate. So let's estimate an AR1 model. So we go to equation estimation, it's unrate, it's the dependent and the constant and then unrate 1, meaning we're having a one period lag. So what you see is you get a very very high coefficient. In fact if you check out what the roots are, um, we'll see that this is not stationary. So that's a better way to estimate an AR model in eViews instead of unrate one, you'd use AR1, that's an AR1 model. So here we have our AR1 term. So you can see the coefficients very close to one. And if we check the armor structure, the roots, and you see that 
it's basically on the unit circle. We want these roots to be inside that unit circle. So uh, perhaps it's a better idea to estimate this model on the change in the unemployment rate. So we just change that in the uh, estimation equation. And here we have now the model for the change in the unemployment rate. We can again check armor structure roots to see where the roots are now. This is clearly inside the unit circle. So here we have our AR1 model, and you can see a standard output are actually Akaike, AIC, and Schwartz SIC criterion. So these are negative numbers, doesn't matter that they're negative, but we want the smallest possible number. So more negative in this case would be better. Now, this regression started in March 1980. Why is that? Now, it actually turns out it's uh, worthwhile to put a little bit of emphasis on the sample period. So let us go back to our whiteboard. So what we did is we're having the unemployment rate. We have these from January 80 to October 2013. The change in unemployment rate, of course, we are losing the first observation because we can only calculate the change for February. Now let's use a timeline. We are starting in February 1980 and we'll go so here, let's say we have December 1980 and we go all the way to October 2013. If we apply an AMA 10 process, which is the same as an AR1, we can apply this to 19, March 1980 to 2013 October. Why is that? Let's briefly think about it. Why is it March? Now we have the data starting in February, but since we're using an AR1 model, we are losing one additional observation. That means we're uh, we're having observations from March. For an AR2 model, we can start in April and we have the same end date. So before we continue here, let's choose, let's consider maximum P and Q of four. So if we look at the most data demanding model, an ARMA 4.4 model, when will that start? What's our first observation? So we're having four lags for the change in the unemployment rate. So the change in the unemployment rate, if you have an AR1 model, we can start in March, AR2 in April, and therefore an AR4 and also an AMA44, we can start in June. We're losing four extra observations. And we have the same end date. So if you look at these, there are different sample periods. So if you were to just calculate measures of fit and then information criteria, you would base them on different sample periods. And you should really avoid that. You want to compare apples with apples, so to say. So when you're comparing information criterion for different models, you want to restrict the models to be applied to the to a same, to a common sample period. And the one we of course want to use is the one which can be used for all models. So the most demanding model will determine the sample period. So we go back in eViews, we change the sample period, which is down here. We change it to 1980 June. So we click OK, get slightly different uh, parameter values that will hardly have changed. We have our AIC and SIC criterion here. And what we shall now do is we shall basically use these and enter them in a table. We'll have a big table of AIC and SIC criterion and we'll write down all the models we consider. So it'll start from AMA Nord Nord all the way to an AMA 4.4 models. Now I'm, I'm leaving out some possible combinations, for instance, an AMA 2.3 model, but this shall work for simplification. So this was our AR1 model, and we can just from what we just saw from the output, we can copy the AIC and the SIC criteria across. What was the SIC negative 0.73? and so forth, so we'll put that here. And now, of course, we have to go through the estimation for all the other models. So just um, go to the estimate option. Let's say we uh, estimate next the AR2 model. Oh no, actually uh, the um, AMA not not model. So that only has a constant and here our AIC and SIC criterion. Uh, 
these values. Uh, that just let us just copy that across, and then we have to estimate all the remaining models. That's a little bit of legwork, and you'll be relieved to know that I'm not going to go through all of this in uh, in this clip. But I'll just present you all the values here. They are at least they should be coming in any second. Here we go, here are all the values. So what we now need to do is we need to find the smallest values here. So let's start with the AIC, we have 0 0.8, 0 0.867, but down here we have a negative 0 0.91. Remember, the smallest ones are the most negative one. This is the one, so AIC recommends an ARMA 2.2 model. What about the SIC, 8.2, 8.21, going up again 86 negative 0.86 this is the smallest value so of the models which we have considered AIC and SIC in fact agree and that doesn't always have to be the case agree and decide that the ARMA 2.2 is the best model so this is the model if you now wanted to proceed to forecast changes in unemployment rate beyond October 2013, this is the model you would estimate and then use to forecast future changes of unemployment.